I'm Dr. Fitzgerald and this is a fully online course entitled Introduction to Logic. This is the first segment of a four-part overview of chapter one of our text which is entitled How to Think Logically. And speaking of thinking logically, this mural which you're looking at is by Raphael, a famous Renaissance artist, and it depicts two of the most logical thinkers from Greek antiquity, Plato and Aristotle at its center. And we'll have more to say about these gentlemen later in the course. The four segments that compose this presentation concern first the study of reasoning including the concept of an argument or inference, second the relationship between logic and reasoning including their main dimensions, third the distinction between arguments and non-arguments, and last the steps in argument analysis. This course should pay substantial dividends to you in terms of your careers. By the time we finish you will have a powerful set of skills including the ability to reason logically, the ability to write and speak clearly, and the ability to argue powerfully. Let's start with reasoning, since we are intimately familiar with it, having done it since our infancy in one form or another. What can we say about it? First, reasoning isn't something that we ordinarily do formally according to elaborate rules. We just do it pretty much by human nature. Second, if we try to observe ourselves reasoning, we quickly see that we are observing our beliefs about things. And third, when we try to get specific about these beliefs, we notice that we do not fully appreciate them until we render them as statements, that is, as declarative sentences that we believe to be true. More specifically, what are we doing when we are reasoning? Quite simply, we're constructing relationships among our beliefs. Let me give you an example. If my cat is playing frantically with something over in the corner, he's probably caught something, maybe a mouse. That is to say, I am making an inference from one belief that my cat is frantically occupied to another, namely that he's caught a mouse. That is reasoning, albeit a very garden variety sample. When we reason we provide justification or backing or support for our beliefs through our other beliefs. We call the beliefs that require support conclusions and those that offer support premises and they always take the form of statements or propositions. And what do we mean by a statement? A statement is an assertion that something is the case such that Flatbush is in Brooklyn for instance or that capital punishment is wrong. To eliminate any confusion Let's distinguish logical thinking from some other disciplines that are concerned with the mind, specifically psychology and neuroscience. Insofar as it is concerned with the mind, psychologists are interested in mental processes. Neuroscientists are interested in the chemistry of the brain, which manifests itself in physiological processes. But logicians are interested in the outcomes of these processes, namely our beliefs insofar as these are expressed in statements. Let's get to the heart of the matter quickly. Sure, we're interested in our individual beliefs, but as logical thinkers, we're far more interested in the logical relations among these beliefs. And there is a mother of all logical relations, as it were, the relationship of support or backing or evidence that one belief provides for another. That is the inferential relationship that we characterize as an argument, where we provide reasons or premises for the belief we are trying to get others to accept. 